So once again, thank you guys all um, for coming today. My name is Sebastian, and it's a pleasure to be here. So in this talk, while kind of preparing for it, I was thinking, because I like watching talks, like how can I make a really inspiring, awesome talk about end-to-end -end testing with Puppeteer and GraphQL? Snapshots. Um, but then I thought that that's probably a pretty bad bet. <laughs> so I thought that how instead can we just make this as useful as possible something that, and make it something that you might actually want to implement in the applications you're building, especially if you are doing end-to-end -end testing. So first off, just a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Sebastian Scholl, and I'm the product manager at 8Base. Pretty much I spend my days doing product uh, feature design, um, work on the product roadmap, and then communicating with our engineer engineering teams a lot, um, the different initi initiatives that the business team needs to have explained to them. And um, kind of one of the things I like to do a lot is I like to blog. So if you find me on Medium or Twitter or LinkedIn, I do a lot of article work. So I love that. One of the big things that happens in our development cycle, I'm sure all of your guys' development cycles, is you run into tons of bottlenecks. And really, I kind of like to think of a bottleneck as anything that happens from when you have the idea to when you deploy the idea. Any writing code, having to talk to someone, paired programming, everything that slows down or potentially makes any type of blip in the, um, in the progress that you're making towards the outcome, you can kind of think of a bottleneck, and then that allows you to think of, well, how do we make this faster? How do we improve this? How can we make the turnaround happen? And one of the things that we were running into uh, at 8Base was that when we were doing end-to-end -end testing, it was becoming a real bottleneck for us. Essentially, end-to-end -end tests took the longest amount of time. They took the longest amount of time to execute. They were the most expensive. Since we were using AWS Lambda as, a, um, as an API, we were having to do live calls to the server, which was taking time and costing us money. And then a lot of the times, these tests were failing for non-client side reasons. So remember, we were doing it in testing on the client side. So sometimes there was a blip in the server side, but that didn't really make the test. The test would fail, but it wasn't really what we were testing. So then we'd have to rerun the suite and re-embark on the process. And so we started thinking of ways, OK, well, how can we improve this process? Right? How can we make it cheaper by not actually having to get or send API calls to the server? How can we test for all basic user scenarios? How can we run different types of tests based on the different points in our CI flow? Right, because for example, if we're just doing a feature branch, we want the test to run, but maybe we can run those ones faster than if we're doing a deploy to uh, to our master branch or merge to a master branch, and kind of splicing up our workflows there. And so what we came up with was the solution using Jest and Puppeteer. If you're not familiar with Puppeteer, it's pretty much a high-level browser API um, or a headless Chrome API uh, that you can use for a lot of different things. But we were even ended up using it for doing our tests or helping us execute our tests with Jest. And what we essentially designed was a Jest um, tool that would hook into a few different events when we we're running our tests, capture GraphQL snapshots, and then reuse those in the future. And so we'll show kind of how that works. And so what's happening when we use this? OK, well, we're adding page event listeners to the request, response, and close events. When a request is made, it tracks it as something that's going to have to be recorded later. When a response is received, it takes that request, it takes that response, and it makes kind of this whole snapshot file that you can see on the right-hand side, which is showing the operation name, the variables, the actual GraphQL query, and then the response that we got back from it. And then once we close that browser, that's when it actually saves all those files, right? And then we can reuse those in the future to make our tests run faster and more reliably. So let's jump in and look at it really quickly. So if I go over to VS Code, I have this embarrassingly simple React app that we're going to test. Pretty much all it does is queries our server and displays the company name on the page. And if we go over to this index test that we have right here, we see that we wrote a test. We pass it to Jest. And then this decorates it or adds the event listeners to actually use the snapshots that we, that we have. And I think that we have good Wi-Fi right now, because we say we're having, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to delete this mox file right here. Hopefully, I don't delete my test. <laughs> and move that to the trash. Cool. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to first, let's actually first just run this normally. So we can see that, hey, we're going to run this test. And it should run successfully. But of course, now I'm on stage, so it won't. Cool. And OK, so let's try it one more time. Essentially, what this is doing is it's running this test, which is going to go get the, uh, the browser or get the page, 
And um, yeah, it's not, it's not running. Okay, so let's try to update it. Let's see if we can get it to work this time. So what I'm running now is I'm saying, okay, now when you run it and it makes that request, actually save the snapshot, right? So it will add it to this directory here. It's so funny. I ran it two minutes ago. Okay, one more try, and then I'm going to put my head down and move on. All right, so for some reason, guys, sorry, it's not working. But essentially, what was supposed to happen, right? So what's supposed to happen is that when we send that request, that request event listener triggers. It captures the uh, query that we sent with all the parameters and the operation name. Then it stores it in a file or a folder right here, which are our request mocks. And this is great, because then whenever we are running that in the future, we don't actually have to ping our server. We can just look locally, and it's almost like this perfect little thing that will then look to see if we already have done that before and use it in the future. And running that update command whenever you know that, hey, we need to update or we want to run these things live, it's going to use the live server to update all those commands or only the new ones, right? So, you know, right now we have one test that we are looking at just to put our, our name on the screen. However, at 8Base, we have like over 200 client-side tests that we're, that we're running, right? And we're running those multiple times every time we're pushing out a new feature. So for us, we were looking at, okay, well, how can we, how do we break this up? And we decided that, hey, we're only going to use recorded request mocks uh, when we're doing merge requests and local checking. <coughs> then we're going to update and record them when we're doing new tests and after server-side updates. And then on the real server, we are going to run you know, the full suite with live whenever we're going to actually do a, a full push. And we were getting a lot of way better results using this. You know, what was great was we saw not only a 2.5 times performance boost in, um, in running our test suites, but also we weren't getting charged for most of the requests that we were making priorly. Right? So there's a great saving cost there. So if we revisit those goals that we had earlier, we can see that, hey, now we are running end-to-end -end tests on all those merge requests. Great. We reduced the cost of running our tests because we're not making those API calls as frequently or only to update them. And then also, we are reducing the occurrences of failed runs for non-client reasons, right? which is a really great thing. And then when it comes to, basic, um, <laughs> when it comes to running tests for all basic user scenarios, um, pretty much, I really wish that I had like some awesome plugin to share with you guys that would write your tests for you, but uh, you guys all have to do that, <laughs> and it's a pain in the ass. It's like going to the gym. However, um, you know, if you do it, you're going to have a much more stable service and something much more reliable uh, to push out to people that you're confident every time. So, if you want to check out that plugin, it's yours. It's at this um, repo on GitHub, and thank you. That's it.